What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I want to show you guys how to get VS Code installed on Ubuntu 22.04. So what's up guys how y'all doing it's josh uh and today like i said in the intro i want to show you guys how to get visual studios code installed on ubuntu 22.04 and as you guys know it's a free code editor which was developed by microsoft and can be used on multiple platforms like linux uh, mac os as well as windows obviously um, it's a very powerful tool for programmers uh, to help you like debug code, run tasks, you know, enable version control, you know, things like that. And it has a whole bunch of features that make it stand out from other code editors that I wanted to show you guys today by highlighting how to install it on Ubuntu 22.04. It's a very simple process. There are two different ways that you can install it on Ubuntu. Uh, you can use the snap package, which is the very uh, simplest way to install it on Ubuntu. And then also you can install it directly from the Windows repository, which I'll show you guys both ways of actually doing it. So let's go on and hop over to my virtual machine so we can go through this install and I can get you guys set up and running. Also, before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ as the official supporter of Rocky Linux, which I think is one of the best replacements for your CentOS server. If you haven't been paying attention, Red Hat announced in 2021, it will be going away with CentOS as the downstream clone for Red Hat and Rocky Linux is here to pick up the pieces. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. Okay, so I'm at my virtual machine and the first way I wanna show you guys how to install it is by adding the Windows repository and key to your system and then installing it from their repository directly. And I always like to show this way first because if you install it this way, you'll get updates to the actual application a little bit faster than using the snap package based on my experience because the package is tested you know uh using windows uh you know using their own testing uh model and then it goes through their snap testing just to verify that it's going to work on ubuntu then it's released through the snap repository but if you get it directly or if you have that repository directly on your system then you'll get those updates a little bit faster like slightly faster than the actual snap package so let's go down and open up our terminal and really the first thing you want to do and let's make this thing a little bigger so you guys can see what's going on but the first thing you want to do is update the system uh not sure how many updates i'm gonna have on this system because i uh haven't done any updates since like last week on this uh virtual machine so we'll run through that right fast and if it's too long i'll skip this in the video but essentially all i'm typing is sudo apt update sudo apt upgrade or you can go into the software center and you can update all the packages on your system through there as well but we'll run it this way uh i always like to do things in the command line you know from the command line uh so We'll go through this process. I'll be back when it actually finishes with the updates for the system. You mainly want to make sure your system is fully up to date when you start adding repositories as well as uh, installing other software on the system. So I'll be back when this finishes. Okay, so our updates are done. And the next thing we need to do is install a couple dependencies for uh, VS Code or some other packages that we need to install on the system. Uh, so let's run sudo apt and actually let's go back and clear the screen but let's type sudo apt install and i already know those packages name i'll have them listed down in the description of the video but it's uh software properties uh dash common and then uh apt transport uh https and then wget as well and then let's put the dot dash y on the end again so we can update those without having to type yes and it looks like some of those packages are installed let's see one newly installed package 
which is apt transport dash uh, HTTP S. So that package is installed, but software uh, properties dash common is already installed and wget is already installed with the latest package. You just want to verify that those are installed on the system. Uh, so by running them, you know, it won't do anything, but it'll install whatever needs to be installed. Now let's go down and clear, clear the screen again. And I have the command, it's basically a double w get command where I'm uh, w getting the package key and adding that key to the system. So that is the command right there. It's basically w get dash q, then the key location, you know, and then apt add key, you know, it'll add it to the system. So let's press enter there and we are good to go because we see the okay right there that means that it's been added to the system and this is just mainly a warning so you can ignore now the next thing we need to do is add the repository i already have the command copy so let's paste it on in there but basically we're just adding that repository uh location to our system so we can press enter there and that'll add the repository all we have to do is press enter uh, as you can see it gives you all the information about it so the repository name description uh more information if you want to see it and it's adding that repository all we have to do is press uh enter to continue and it'll add that repository and actually uh test that repository by running a apt dash update basically just refreshing those repositories that are on the system but as you can see this this is the newly added repository right there as well as right here you'll see this right here as well microsoft so anything microsoft you'll see it in here those repositories have been added to the system now let's go down and clear the screen again and out of habit uh even though it ran it after it uh when i added that repository i always run sudo apps uh updates and that'll you know refresh those repositories again and you can just ignore this warning this is basically talking about it's using a legacy trusted key uh gpg key ring so you know you can ignore it it's all good it'll work properly now we can go on and install uh vs code so let's uh control l so we can clear the screen again let's just type sudo apt install and the package name is code and let's press enter and it'll go through and install like i said that that code so it shouldn't take too long to install it's just one package uh not many no no repositories or no uh dependencies it'll just install the actual application so let's wait for this to finish it shouldn't take too long like i said all right cool so it finished uh didn't take too long i, I had to pause the video because it was running a little slow, uh, but it got it installed, you know, no problem on the system. Now we can just click on show applications and we can go through and find VS Code, which should be added in here. You'll see it. So Visual Studios Code. So all we have to do is click on it, open it up, and then we are good to go. So as you can see, you know, getting started pops up right away. All you have to do is go through and make all your changes right here. You know, as far as the looks, you can sync to and from other devices, you know, shortcut access, uh, everything rich support for our languages and open up your code if you want to. So uh, they got, you know, some cool themes. Uh, you can also see more themes. Uh, and I won't go through this whole application because I don't use it that often. I don't want to give people the wrong information. But if you are a programmer and you probably use Visual Studios, then you probably already know how to use this. You know, 100 percent. I'm just kind of giving you guys some insight on how to install it on Ubuntu. If you've never used, you know, Linux before or did programming from Linux, then this is a way to actually get it on there. Now, let's go down and close it because, like I said, I don't really want to go through it. And let's go down and remove it off the system uh, from using this package or using the terminal. Let's go down and remove it from using the terminal. So, sudo apt remove. And all we got to do is type code again. I'll go through and remove it from your system. As you can see, it, you know, it frees up about 369 megabytes of space. You know, that's about how big the application is. So once that finishes, then I'll show you guys how to install it using Snap. Okay, so that should give you an idea of how to remove code. It's a simple command using apt. You know, you can use that. 
now let's uh, actually install it using the snap package and you don't have to go up, worry about the adding a repository adding a key you know and all those little dependencies that we installed uh, it'll install everything for you using snap so uh, it's a simpler way of using it but like I said uh, when you run it through using the Windows uh, repository you'll get updates a little bit faster on the actual application by running our it all depends on how often you update your system as well you know what i'm saying so let's go down and use snap right fast but we could type sudo snap install and then code and before we run that let's uh let's verify that we have snap installed but on Ubuntu systems nowadays, they all come with snap installed and enabled on the system. But let's go down and run that right fast just to make sure it's installed on the system. But sudo apt install, and then the package name is snap D. So let's press enter. Make sure it's installed on the system. And as you can see, snap D is already at the newest version, so we get to go. Now let's go back and run the sudo snap. And I didn't mean to back it all the way off, but sudo snap install and it's the same package name but install code so let's press enter mm, and this is an error that i didn't see on another ubuntu install i had but it says this revision of snap code was published using classic confinement and thus may perform arbitrary system changes outside of the security sandbox that snaps are usually confined to which may put your system at risk so uh, you can install it. You just have to put an option on the end of it based on what it's saying. So just put classic on there. Uh, I guess they made some changes to it. I looked at this a while back uh, trying to get this thing installed. Uh, like on another Ubuntu install I had. It, it wasn't this one. I know for sure. Uh, I'm. It might have been an older virtual machine I had that I deleted. And what I mean by older, like a couple weeks ago or a week ago. Um when I installed VS code on that system, I didn't see this issue, but uh, let's go down and get it installed the way they're saying to install it by using classic, but warning, like what it says, um, arbitrary system changes outside of security sandbox that snaps are usually confined to, which may put your system at risk. And <laughs> that, that kind of scares me right there. So, at this point in time you know with this video i wouldn't want you guys to install it using snap but it is what it is you can use it this way uh let's just go down and get it installed just so i can show you guys how to do it but simply i just put that dash dash classic on the end and let's wait for this thing to actually install and we'll i'll show you guys that it will open up the exact same way that it opened up you know uh when we install the repository and the key and all that good stuff uh either way will work and i'm glad something like this happened because um it's it's unpredictable what you'll see when you're installing applications especially from you know like microsoft uh it's always some weird stuff that may pop up and i and i always like to leave stuff in here that you know just just so you guys know that i'm human as well i i <laughs> I don't uh, I'll run into problems as well like my videos you know seem like oh I'm just going breezing through this stuff sometimes I do run into issues and I like to leave those in the videos whenever I make mistakes or uh, run into issues like this so you guys will know that I did I face issues you know as well working with these operating systems but as you can see it's done it's installed so we should be able to see it under applications again uh, but this is the snap package so same thing you know what I'm saying it'll start off uh, give you that um, getting started or welcome screen you select your themes you know all that good stuff and one cool thing about themes um, you know it all depends on how you see things on the screen you know what I'm saying like um, for instance if you have problems with your eyes or you get headaches or something to that because you're looking at a screen all day that's one good things these themes are for you know is helping you so you don't strain your eyes and all that good stuff uh because i like i used to program a long time ago and sometimes you have to step away from the computer especially if you can't you know adjust the color on the screen you know it, it'll strain your eyes give you headaches and all that stuff uh depending on how long you sit in front of the computer 
but i hope you guys enjoyed the video that's you know i showed you two different ways to get visual studios code installed on ubuntu 22.04 you know uh both of them are fairly simple uh and it was our command line you know showing you guys that but you could have installed um the snap package using the software center uh but i figured it would be a benefit to show you guys how to do it from the command line because in the software center it's just you know click install and then it'll install on your system uh and that's one of the reasons i like linux you you learn a little bit more about the system uh especially hopping in there playing around with the command line uh you get a better understanding of how the system actually works but i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like share and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave comments down in the comments below and also check out my introduction to linux course which is on my channel it currently has about 400,000 views on free code camps uh youtube channel mine is also on my channel so either one you know check it out it's uh me on the video teaching you guys linux uh and it seems like it's an awesome course uh because i'm getting a lot of great feedback from it so definitely check that out if you're interested in learning linux because I think I do a pretty good job of breaking it all down, you know, as simple as possible and demystifying the command line within Linux. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it techy.